This video is not going to be edited in any way. I am trying to make this as fast as possible so I can post it. Just so you know, it, I don't even have the microphone on. I just had a thought and I decided I was going to make a video because I haven't posted a video in a couple days here. So here's the thing. If you're not following me on other social media, then you don't know what's happening. I'm having a very bad week. I'm not going to get into the specifics. It's irrelevant. The bottom line is that I, to give you an example of how bad we are, because of the time of the month it is when I am promised or when I'm told that there's a possibility that there's something that can help me with the end of month uh, deal, I jump at it because I do need the money. And so I was given a, a scenario and that scenario did not come through. And so I did not get what I was thinking I was going to get. And it is my fault because I allowed myself to get my hopes up. So I'm not going to sit here and blame everybody else. It's my fault for getting my hopes up. Bottom line is I have now less time to try to figure this out until end of month. And that made me think about something that, well, okay, no, let me back up. I was furious and so I decided to go for a walk. However, this being Florida at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, it's 100 degrees outside. It's actually 78, but it feels like 100. So what I ended up doing is coming back home because this idea got in my head of a topic that I thought I would, I wanted to share with you because I wanted to hear your thoughts on it as well. And that is the, pro the, the concept of experts on social media. Now, this is going to touch with other topics that are running around right now. So stay tuned for that. But let's start with the easiest one. Because since I've been looking for a job on and off for five years, we're going to go with job experts, okay? Now, before I even start talking, I want you to understand something. Unlike some of my peers on the YouTube space, I don't have a problem with somebody that makes a living making courses. Why? Because I buy books. I buy story, uh, story books. I buy how-to books. I buy DIY books. So the concept of making a course, which is probably going to be similar to a book, doesn't offend me or get me mad. I just don't buy it if I don't want it. But it's been my experience personally I've bought a course from a person that had a book as well, and I had purchased the book a long time before, and then I bought the course, and the course went into details that the book did not. Therefore, guess what? I am not against courses. Am I against some courses because it's obvious that the, that's not my problem. That's your problem as a consumer to get yourself educated and I'm going to give you the only hint I can give you. If you are purchasing a course from an expert on social media and their social media pages don't have more than a million subscribers on each one or a million followers, don't buy the course. They might be really good. Like I'm really good at, at seeing somebody else's page and going, wow, I know exactly what you should do to improve that. So that's a thing. But in that in that concept, I would go for a consulting or a coaching and not necessarily a, a course. Because if you're guaranteeing me that after I read this course, I'm going to get 100,000 followers and I don't get them and I did everything step by step the way you told me, which by the way, it's impossible. And I'm going to tell you why, unless you do it real quick. By the time the course, you get the course, you don't know where the algorithm is. If you've been following social media for a while, you know the algorithm right now in all of the social medias is gone nuts. Is it saturation? Is it the company is playing with the algorithm itself? I don't know what to tell you because I'm not an expert. But I can tell you that I had a certain visibility in my personal pages. So for example, Facebook is my personal page. I had a certain visibility with my own friends that I no longer have. Is it the advertising? Is it the promotion? Is it that my friends are no longer on social media as much? No, that's, some of those could affect, but the people that I want to reach when I post something, most of them are there. And the reason why I know is because if I publish it as a reel, they show up in quantities. But if I make the exact same post, 
as a post on my personal page, nobody sees it. Maybe two or three people will. And I actually have about a thousand friends on, on, on Facebook. Well, maybe not a thousand, but you know, I have a nice chunk of change. And when a couple of years ago, I would get 95 reactions. Now I'm getting five or six. Twitter, we're not even going to discuss Twitter. But the bottom line is this. When you are buying a course from a person, do your due diligence. If you think that the person does not have the numbers, it's all smoke and mirrors, which most people are right now anyways, take it with a grain of salt or, wear, or wait for the special offer that will absolutely come your way at some point because it never fails. If you show interest in a course and you even give them their email or their or your profile in a particular social media page, within a month you're going to get an offer to get the same course for a lot lower. It is what it is. Now, going back to the experts, I'm going to give you a personal experience, example because that's my experience and I think it will help you visualize what I'm trying to say. I have been looking on and off for five years. The reason why I've been on and off is because there have been circumstances in my life. My mother's death, my father-in-law's death, um, we moved. Times when I have not been as, as vigilant and as careful and as proactive as I could be. But there have been times when, you know, I can tell you in two weeks I've sent 40 applications and, and, and in the last three days, my daughter and I sent 40 applications. So there have been times when I am very uh, proactive. There have been times, however, that based on the advice of experts, I have gone and stopped doing the contact everybody you can and, 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 and focus on certain people and certain ways of doing things. And it has gotten me the same amount of interest than when I sent 40 none i'm 57 years old i have ibs which is considered a disability for by many employers um i have either pick don't want to say or yes to the disability question depending on the company i um if you look at my resume you can tell i'm not young and so it's been hard it's been a struggle however the thing about experts, there's two things about experts in, in this particular niche of job search that you have to keep in mind. These people are either all recruiters, so they're looking at it from the head of the recruiter, and there's some advice that works for people like you, but it's not generalized advice. And what I mean by that is, if you're starting out and you are 20-something years old, and you have a fresh resume with maybe one or two jobs, and you just got your bachelor's degree and you're looking for work, you're not going to have the same experience looking for a job than I am. And so maybe the advice that they give you might not correspond to your situation specifically. Again, I give you an example that I think a lot of people are going to understand. If you are unemployed, be it because you've been out of the workforce for years, be it because you've been down on your luck, whatever the reason is. Not contacting as many people as possible and trying to tailor your resume and your uh, cover letter to specific opportunities might not be the way to go for you. I can tell you in the last four and a half years, I have gotten zero interest. And in the last three days, thanks to my daughter helping me reach more people, I have, I have three that are either in interview process or testing process, and that has never happened to me before. I had an interview this morning. In five years, I had never gotten an interview, and I got an interview this morning. Now, you could claim that it's the, the, the job market, but I'm going to give you another example of where the experts are saying one thing, and I'm seeing another. Experts are talking about the remote market being dead. Then explain to me why, except for one job, all the other jobs that I've applied to and I'm in different stages of the process, all of them are remote. Another example that I want to give you about experts and talking would be YouTube. If you watch three or four 
content creators that specialize in expertise on YouTube and how to grow your audience, nine times out of 10, one of them at least is going to contradict the other three or four. How do you know which one is right? You don't. You don't. You really don't. Because for some people, what X says works, and for other people, what Y said works. I'm going to give you a last example because it's something that I just saw today and, and, and I've been watching like comments and whatnot for the last three days. And it is the situation with Wendy Williams. Some people have complained that this is exploitation of somebody that couldn't uh, give their consent. It's funny because they're comparing the situation with Bruce Willis and it seems like everybody forgot that the last couple of movies that Bruce Willis did, everybody was talking about the fact that he did, you could tell that he was not there anymore and that people were exploiting him for money. It turns out that he had actually signed contracts in expectation of him slowing down so that he could basically make his last little bit of money before the disease took its course. So, couple of things that I want to show you that I have yet to see an expert bring up. And I've seen a lot of experts talking about this, like doctors and whatnot, things that they haven't brought up. And I'm not an expert. I just have a mom who passed away because of uh, dementia. Okay. First of all, dementia doesn't just appear out of the blue. You're going to have five to 10 years of developing things in your brain before you actually start showing signs. I don't care which dementia it is. They all seem to follow the same pattern. And that makes sense. Why? Because your brain is constantly thinking what you're supposed to say, do, and, and, and think. And if your brain is catching that you're slipping on something, it's going to try to make up for it in another way. I'm going to give you an example that ha has nothing to do with dementia, but it has to do with how your brain works. My brother, and I've mentioned this before, my brother had a stroke caused by something called Sudomisoma peritonei, which I'm not going to get into right now. As soon as he had the first stroke, and keep in mind that when he had the first stroke, he didn't know he had a stroke. He had an idea that something wasn't right, but he didn't know it was a stroke. The, the, the mechanism on his brain was not giving gender to his answers. In Spanish, when you talk about a child, there is a different word for girl child and a different word for boy child, Okay. Nena, nene, nina, niña, niño, okay? Usually it's A-O at the end, not always. So what happens is he would start talking to you and say something that was clearly intended for a male, but he's talking to, for example, to me, I'm a female, and eventually he caught on that what he was thinking and what was coming out of his mouth were not the same thing. So how did he solve that problem? And I kind of gave you a hint when I started talking. English. Because in English, a child is a child. You don't have a gender. And I'm talking about the word, not the you personally. He figured out that there were less gender-specific words in English than in Spanish. So he started talking to, to everybody in English. Eventually, of course, we all caught on something's up and we took him to the hospital. And sure enough, by the time he was out of the hospital, he had had a second stroke. And unfortunately, that did not end well. But what I'm saying is your brain and sometimes you will catch yourself doing things. So you will work around them to avoid per people noticing. And that's really important to keep in mind. Number two, I have yet seen the experts in, in other areas, for example, the experts in the area of who's handling her money, that kind of thing. I've seen a lot of people talk about, well, her family should be handling her money or the law has changed so that other people will handle your money or the person that is handling her money is being accused of stealing money from another client kind of situation. Um, Nobody is talking about what could have been done because let's be clear, whether you think this is exploitation or not, it is a great moment for us to talk about dementia and what the impact it has on everybody. I don't care if Wendy cannot come back to, to TV, okay? 
as much as it bothers me because I actually like Wendy and, and it's heartbreaking because she's young still, the reality is that her health comes first. And I see a lot of people yapping and not enough people focusing on her health. I've seen one person, Campire, is the only one that I see talking about we want what's best for Wendy, her health, and everything else. And that's the way it should be, okay? But Campire, like me, is not an expert on dementia or on anything else. But this is a moment to talk about dementia and talk about the real impacts it has on life and how people can take advantage of that situation. I see a lot of people talking and nobody doing anything for her. Now, I haven't seen the documentary because it hits too close to home, but from the reactions and the clips that I've seen all over the place, I see a lot of people talking, a lot of people claiming that it's exploitation while creating content for social media. And I'm not talking about Campire, who is giving a very, very unbiased, well, technically unbiased review of the situation. I'm talking about people like Chris Cuomo, who is, oh my God, this is exploitation of Wendy while making a segment on YouTube that sells advertising, which means he's making money out of the situation, which is why I'm bringing this whole thing up. Experts and their dumbass opinions. You have a lot of people in this world right now that claim to be an expert at one thing or another. They are very happy to give opinions on things they know nothing about. The amount of people that I have seen talking about how Wendy's mean and she was always mean and all this other stuff have no clue what dementia is and what dementia does, especially when it's when you involve substances, in this case, alcohol. People, when they get dementia, they turn into a completely different person. I can tell you from personal experience, I had to fall in love with my mother all over again because the mother that I had now was not the mother that I had my entire life. And I loved her because that was my mother. But in reality, my mother was not there anymore. And I had to learn to care about the person that was there now. It is the hardest thing I've ever had to do other than losing her twice. Because in the end, you lose them twice. You lose them when they get the disease and then you lose them when they die. Make no mistake about it. Dementia is 100% lethal. So is life for that matter. But dementia is 100% lethal. There is no cure. You can slow it down. But unfortunately, in the case of Wendy, she likes to have alcohol and she doesn't understand that she's not supposed to be drinking alcohol, which leads me to another point where the experts are lacking in this particular situation. One of the things, the first thing that I was told when my mother was officially diagnosed with dementia is that you don't try to fix things or make them see things the way you live, in the life you live. You have to go to their world. In other words, she keeps talking about wanting to go back to television. Just talk to her about her years in, on television until you can find a way of distracting her into another topic. That is the strategy that you use when you have somebody with dementia. Not one single person in the entire, no, I have not, I have yet to see anybody in comments, in reactions, in clips of the video, anywhere. Talk about the fact that instead of getting angry with her and trying to argue with her, what you need to do is keep her calm and distract her. In other words, she starts talking about the show. You go ahead, there's one way to distract her that is going to keep her very happy. And that is, which one was your favorite show? And if she says something, you keep her going on that direction. Or which one is the favorite guest you had on the show? Or if she said, if you, or you can ask her, if you could have anybody you wanted on the, on the chair, who would you interview? That's a little bit of a segue so that then you can keep on distracting, distracting, distracting until you get her into a completely different topic with her consent because she's going to be more than happy to talk about those things. Nobody has talked about that, which is why I made this video because I needed to get all this stuff out of my chest. Experts are great until they're not. The number one person that's an expert on you and your situation and what you're going through is you. And the only way you're gonna get anywhere 
in your life, in your career, in your relationships, is you you trust yourself that your gut instincts are right and that when you need to seek advice from somebody, you seek advice from somebody. Don't let anybody tell you, oh, experts are con artists. Are... Look, base it on your experience because if somebody can be a con artist all they want, but if the advice they gave you works, are you really going to care that they're a con man? No, you're going to care that the advice worked and you're a happy person. And I realize that I've been rambling for about 20 minutes, so I'm going to go now. But thank you so much for watching. And let me know what you think in the comment section below. Bye.